Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta 4 has been out for a few days. I've been using it full time on my 14 Pro Max and iPad Pro, and there's even more to talk about as far as features and updates. Also, we'll talk about the experience, not just of iOS 17 beta 4, but also iOS 16.6 that I have here. And we'll talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over almost 10,000 votes and 237 comments. I've read all of the comments to determine what iOS 16.6 and iOS 17 beta four are like. Now, first, a couple things to talk about as far as releases, AirPods firmware 6.0 developer beta two was updated for AirPods pro two. So if we check the firmware version, we'll go into settings. I'll connect my AirPods and with my AirPods connected, let's go into our settings here. And if we go into our AirPods, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the version is 6A262E. This is actually up from letter D before, so these updated on their own just being nearby. Now also iPhone 15 has some news. Now I won't release any spoilers or anything like that, but as far as iPhone 15, we are expecting a price hike and possible delay. We'll talk more about that on Monday with the regular news update, but I just wanted to make you aware that due to maybe the titanium frame that we might have, there could be a price increase and more. So let me know what you'd like to hear about in Monday's news video. Safari technology preview was updated again, and it seems Apple updates this almost weekly with a new build. It's available for iOS, macOS Sonoma, and macOS Ventura, and has been updated to version 175 that was released on July 27th. Also, if you use Twitter, that's been updated in the App Store with the X. This was first present on Android, now it's available here. However, I'm not seeing it on my icon just yet on my home screen, so maybe that will change very quickly. Now, as far as overall updates and changes, well, the first thing has to do with wallpaper. If we go into wallpaper and then maybe add a new one, we have a new option at the top for live photos. I didn't see this one before. People doesn't show on beta three for me either for some reason, but live photos seems to be a new icon. Also, if we customize our wallpaper and go to change the font at the top here, it can be customized from very large to very small. However, some people are saying that you can no longer bring it as small as you once could. So if we take a look at beta three that we have here, it goes super thin. And I guess there's a slight difference. So they've changed that. And then at the very thickest, it's slightly different as well. So it doesn't go as thick or thin as it used to. I'm not sure that's too much of an issue, but let me know what you think of that in the comments below. If we go into the phone app, it seems in this update that they've moved voicemail back to the tab here. It no longer shows for me under recents. The health app has been updated a little bit. If we go into health on both devices, beta three on the left, beta four on the right, and under mental well-being, if we go into state of mind, this looks a little different. If we go and log our state of mind, you'll see the background has completely changed and dark mode is enabled on both phones. So you'll see it's dark on the new version. If we log how we feel, we'll tap next. You'll see the animation is a little bit slower and looks a little different. We can select neutral or pleasant, and that's the colors change and the background is different. It's more of a dark mode version. So if we slide over here, select pleasant again, the background is dark again. So we can just say calm and content tap next. Then it says what's having the biggest impact on your day or on you. We'll say family and friends tap done and that logs your overall state of mind. It looks a little bit different this time around, and I think it's a nicer version of it compared to what we had before. If we connect our AirPods Pro 2 one more time and then go into settings, and you'll see I need to charge my case. Let me clear it off the other devices here that we're not going to use it with. So we'll clear it, go into settings, and then go into our AirPods Pro settings. Here under noise control, transparency and adaptive look a little bit different in beta four. It's a slight change, but not very big. Also, if we go down to spatial audio and you don't have it configured, you may see a new pop-up come up that actually tells you more about it. So if we go into this, you'll see, I already have it configured, but it looks similar to this. So if I place these in my ears, we'll give it a second here placed in my ears and it says, see and hear how it works. And now it gives us this little demonstration of spatial audio and it looks a little bit different. So some people are seeing that pop up right away though. If we go into music and maybe we're playing a song and we want to airplay that, 
Apple has updated the animation. So if we tap on airplay, you'll see it sort of pops up and then expands. Let me show you on beta three, what that looks like. And within music, if we tap on the airplay icon at the same time, you'll see the different animation. They've changed it, given it a different folder look, and it sort of pops up a little bit nicer. It's a small change, but a nice refinement within photos. I've shown some changes with live photos and they've made another change. And this was in beta three as well. If you go into a live photo, tap the three dots in the upper right, you have the option to save it as a video now. So that's really nice. And then you can scrub through it. And I've shown that before where you can scrub through the live video. Something I didn't mention in beta three has to do with translate. If we go into translate and then select a language, we have a bunch of different options as normal, but we also have Ukrainian. Now this is a new option that Apple has added for translation. Also within weather, there's some updates. So if we go into weather, We'll go in here. And if we scroll down under weather, you'll see not only do we have wind, but we have gusts again, this was in beta three and also we have moon phases and you'll see those below with more detail. We had some of this before, but they've updated it in beta three to look a little bit better. Now I did want to share some changes as well in watch OS 10 beta four and within watch OS 10, if we go into the activity app in the activity app, it now has a gray background instead of pure black. Now this might use a little bit more battery, so I'm not sure why they've done this, but it definitely has more of a dark gray background instead of pure black, as you can see here. Also, if we go into the workouts app, maybe we'll start a workout. I actually have this set up as a quick toggle and we go into a workout. Maybe we'll go out to an outdoor walk. We tap to make it go live. We'll give it a second here for it to count down. And now we've started and you can mark a segment or pause. It's giving you information there, but in the upper left where we have the walking person showing the activity, this has been updated with a round background to more bring that to the forefront and highlight it. So it's just a small visual change there. And if we go back into our apps, scroll down and we go into stopwatch, there's a small change here as well where they've updated some of the colors. They've also refined some of the font and text. So it's a little bit thinner than it was before. It looks a little different. I think it looks great, but it's super bright on this background, but they did make a little bit of an update where everything's sort of thinner or slimmer. Apple removed an option and accessibility. If we go into our settings, then accessibility, then voiceover, then we go down to audio. There's no longer an option for sound curtain on beta three. If we go into settings, you'll see sound curtain as an option. So we now have voiceover sound and haptics, audio ducking, audio select speaker in call, and then send to HDMI here on beta three, they had sound curtain, which said sound curtain ensures that your iPhone does not play sound from music or sound effects. Emergency alerts will still play sound. So I'm not sure why they actually removed that, but they've removed it in this update. I haven't been able to find it anywhere else. If you still see it, let me know in the comments below on my home screen. You may have already noticed that the Twitter icon is now changed with the app update. So that seems to have changed for most people. And if we go into it, we go into X or Twitter or whatever we'll call it. Now you'll see my friend Steve Moser actually said, what will you set your iPhone action button to? He found references in iOS 17 beta four code mentioning an action button. This has long been suspected to be a feature of iPhone 15 pro models where they would actually replace the silent switch with an action button. And so you could change it just like you could on the Apple watch ultra to different things such as accessibility, shortcuts, camera, flashlight, and more. Let me know what you would set it to if you have an action button on your iPhone. Now, as far as the iOS 16.6 experience, most people are saying it's quite good. It's better than iOS 16.5 updates. Many people say that it's quite stable and battery life has improved. As far as its security content that wasn't available at the time of making the video earlier this week, but on Apple's security website, there's a bunch of different security content. So things such as the Apple neural engine, find my, the kernel, the backend code, basically to the OS. And if we keep going, we'll go all the way down to WebKit. So lots of important updates. I would definitely recommend updating as I really haven't heard any complaints whatsoever with this over previous updates. So as far as public updates, it seems to be pretty stable. As far as iOS 16.7, if we're ever going to see one of those, we probably will. And it will be later in the month or probably September last year. There was just an iOS 15.7 RC and then a final release. Then iOS 16 was released and we continued from there. So we'll probably see a similar release schedule this year. Now, as far as iOS 17 beta five and iOS 17 public beta two, which is a bit odd that it's not out, at least at the time of filming this video, I would expect 
public beta two next week with beta five the following week. So usually we're on a two week schedule until after beta five, I went back and checked and that seems to be what we normally have. So this coming week, maybe Monday we'll have iOS 17 public beta two or Apple found an issue with it. So we could actually have a beta four re-release and public beta two. We don't really know what Apple's planning at this point, but based on previous years, beta five would be another week out. As far as camera improvements, I am actually hearing that it's better than before between beta three and beta four. The overall camera quality is hard to tell the difference. I'll show you a couple photos and let me know what you think, but I don't think you're going to see much of a difference here as it's very hard to tell the difference between both of them. But in general, it seems to be better than iOS 16.6. As far as overall connectivity, that definitely seems to be better. In fact, on my way to the office today, I actually noticed that I was able to play music without it stopping. It continued to play as you would expect, and it didn't drop. I've had that issue before where even though I had signal, it would drop. Now it seems to be much better. It's staying connected to Wi-Fi for me without any issue. And I really haven't heard any complaints this time around with beta four for that. As far as things they've fixed, well, there's good news. They've fixed the text bug. So if you're going and maybe searching for something or just wanting to type, it always shows up where you have the keyboard, where it should be. That seems to be fixed hundred percent in this update. Also the mail widget seems to be working properly now without having to go into mail first. It just pops up and shows what's new. Also, we've heard that mostly it's fairly stable, not very many respring's or any problems with it crashing and rebooting. That's much better in beta four. According to most people, it doesn't mean everything works properly. And there are some bugs still the number one bug I keep hearing is a rotation bug. So sometimes when you have rotation turned on, like I do, and maybe we go into Safari within Safari. If we rotate here, it seems to work for me, but some people report this is an issue and to fix this, a reboot typically does that for you. Also still, there's some complaints of CarPlay not connecting. I've had this issue where I've had this in the car. It doesn't connect. I have to go into it, reset it and go back in. So that's still an issue. I've also heard issues with widgets just completely being blank. I've actually not experienced this unless I reboot the phone and it takes a minute to populate, but in general, they seem to be working for me as expected. The major issue I've heard as well early on is some people were not able to update. So going into software update, they kept getting an error when they were trying to update to the beta. So I'm not sure why that happened. I've told them to reboot and they still weren't able to update. They could use a computer of course. And that's why I typically recommend if you're thinking of installing iOS 17 beta four, that you have a computer ready to back it up if you're having an issue or maybe updating it with that. So that definitely could help. But if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta four, I would probably wait until beta two for the public beta. If you haven't installed it already, if you're on beta three, definitely update it. But if you're wanting to try it out, typically the public betas are pretty stable, especially the second one. So as we're getting to beta four and beta five or whatever Apple's doing this time around, it's usually pretty stable at that point. However, you still will have some bugs here and there. I haven't experienced the magic keyboard bug as well with beta four. So it seems like they've fixed that. Now, if we go into our release notes in the feedback app, make sure you're submitting feedback if you have issues. But if we go into the inbox, go to our release notes, there are a ton of known issues this time around. So definitely some things to be cautious about. I would look at this if you can, I'll link it in the description. It's public so you can take a look at it and see if there's any issues that are critical to you as that would really be important if of course, if you're using this as your main device and you have important business you need to do on it. So just make sure that nothing is listed here. You can search whether that's airdrop or assistive access or known issues or audio codecs, all of that is listed here that they're known issues about. So just make sure you check this and of course, submit feedback if you have it. Now, as far as performance, you may have already noticed that when I swipe home, oftentimes it stutters. It doesn't do it every time, but sometimes when I swipe home, it stutters. Now it's not specific to the dynamic Island anymore. So if I play this song and swipe home, it seems to be smooth there, but sometimes it's just stuttery throughout. I'm hearing this more from older devices than I am with iPhone 14 pro max, but most complaints seem to be on iPhone 13 and older. Some also say that animations in general are just slow. So the performance is okay, but the animation would be slow. Some people also complain that games seem to be slow for them, depending on what it is. As far as battery life, let's go into settings. We'll take a look at that. It has improved for me a little bit, but if we go to battery, 
battery health and charging. I'm now down to 91%. Last week I was at 92. It stayed there for quite some time. This is with 251 cycles, according to coconut battery. So it is getting a little bit worse. It's still having to be charged quite a bit, but if we look at the last 10 days today, so far, I've used it for three hours and 31 minutes of screen active time and one hour and 29 minutes of screen idle time. And I've used about, well, you'll see I'm at 64% battery. If we take a look at the day before, I used 75% battery and didn't even get three hours of screen active time. However, if we go back even further, it was worse. I only got about two hours on the previous betas. So if we go back, the best day I ever had with 100% usage was four hours and 48 minutes. It's been pretty terrible for me, and you'll see my usage is not really anything in particular. So Instagram, home and lock screen, music, and, and then Twitter. So not a whole lot of things really using it, but it's still an issue for me. One other thing I did want to mention is the heat of the device, as many ask. It's actually staying fairly cool this time around. The first day, after installing the update it was quite warm but right now it's nice and cool i've really had no issues with it whatsoever with beta 4. however my battery life maybe that explains some of it it's not processing as much in the background as far as storage some people have asked me to mention that so we'll go into general then we'll go to iphone storage and some of the wording has changed this time around with optimized storage you may see some different wording changes here We'll enable that. And if we scroll down, you'll see that iOS 17 is taking up 11.01 gigabytes. Anytime you install an update, it overwrites the old one. My system data, which is just system cache, can go up and down, but I'm only at a gigabyte or so. Some people have said that this update actually made this much smaller than it was for them before. However, if you have a ton of different memory available or storage rather available, like I do, it can use that as different storage when it's processing in the background. So I don't pay too much attention to that, but I just wanted to show you that in general. Now let's take a look at some of your comments. The first comment is from Mangarda 2012, and this one is particularly different in that this person upgraded from 15.4.1 to 16.6. They said battery seems to be the same as iOS 15. Now I know that battery drain is dependent on how you use your phone, not the effect of iOS itself they're using an iPhone 12 Pro Max. So that's great news. It should be very stable at this point. If you want the features of iOS 16, according to them, it's actually working well. Mind Art Creativity said, iOS 16.6 on 14 Pro Max, I feel like the battery is finally good again. At least it doesn't drop 1% every minute. On the previous version, I had a bug where I couldn't add a blank home screen page in wiggle mode. The page selector was just one big dot and swiping left would give me the library in wiggle mode. That bug seems to have been resolved for me. Jeremy DeBose said iOS 17 beta 4 on 14 Pro Max. I've been destroying my battery without trying. It feels like the keyboard correction word selection has reverted back to iOS 1 through 16 wonkiness, but no respring's heat or freezing. Jonathan M. Sanchez 93 says iOS 17 beta 4 for me is working great, but I have to admit that beta 3 was giving me better battery life. I used to have on beta 3 up to 13 hours of screen active time, and now on beta 4 I get around 7 hours. I already submitted in the feedback app, hopefully they resolve this. By the way, I have a 14 Pro Max. iOS 17 Beta 4 here on 13 Mini. Battery life on standby is great, minimal drain. However, performance leaves a lot to be desired. Choppy animations when closing apps, especially the camera. Heat while using the phone is also still there. Sometimes it heats up quite a bit, sometimes it's normal, not sure why that is. And the camera lag on 13 mini is still there. So that's everything for iOS 17 beta 4. Of course, we're still waiting for iOS 17 public beta 2, and hopefully it's out by the time you're watching this video or early next week. Let me know what you want most from iOS 17. Do you want maybe stability, or would you rather have new features or changes we're not expecting? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please Please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like as always thanks for watching this is Aaron I'll see you next time